yeah, you know who's already ordered three? Can I say there's just a guest. whole bunch of different directions to take this? Can we just <laughs> go to our along. guest, We're please? moving along. We've got uh, Eric Macamella, Team 1260 Sports Legal Analyst, to find out if we're okay for the last five minutes. Uh, Eric, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Somebody cue up the theme song to Golden Girls, please. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Actually, Thank you for being a friend. Actually, how old was Blanche? Yeah, if it was naked, Rest Blanche. Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when she passed away, I believe early 80s. No, but that I mean, was most troubling. I mean, in Golden Girls days, though. Uh, how old in the sh- on the show? Yeah. She was in her 60s, so incredibly hot. How you yeah. doing? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did you just I mean, throw it out? How you doing? I don't know how it is for you guys, but for me, when I go to a place with a bunch of 85-year-old women, that's speed dating, baby. <laughs> that's, speed dating. that's called a target-rich environment, well, Eric yeah. Macromala. <laughs> you have Please. to move quickly because how many of them are going to be around? What's wrong? Oh my hey, you guys are reasons. just <laughs> beating this up. You creepy lawyer, you. Yeah, you're a you're a you're a pervert, Macamala. Um, <laughs> this is so good for my career, guys. <laughs> so so good. Team 1260 Sports Legal Analyst Eric Macamala with us on the show. Let's start. We had the author of the uh, Derek Bugard piece in the New York Times on the show. Very good interview. Uh, very good piece, John Branch. That's right, phrase. Thanks. Uh, you had an interesting tweet, a couple of them there, Eric. Tell us a little bit about maybe the legal ramifications that that maybe some of these families can start considering towards the National Hockey League. Yeah, and I, and I did talk about it as well on my show. I did, I did a segment on, on the legal side of this. Mm-hmm. And I think, it's, I think it's important to remember that from a legal standpoint, you know, the idea of suing the NHL is, is a bit premature. Um, you know, Bill Daly came out and, and he used words like we're dealing with, you know, new research and, and new ideas and talking about, you know, banning fighting, for example, is premature because the empirical evidence isn't there. And, and by that, I mean, of course, we're saying the link um, between degenerative brain disease and fighting, there is that link. And of course, the NHL allows fighting. So then you want to kind of pull them in. But the thing is, the studies aren't the studies aren't there yet. Now, there will be a time where com- where science and studies will catch up to common sense, I think. And then at that point, the NHL will need, I think, to take some action. Because I've said this many, many times, that, that, that liability drives policy. The, the potential to be sued results in new rules. We saw, we saw it in the NFL um, you know, uh, this season you know, and, and, and last season, the headshots, the whole Jerome Harrison situation, things like that. This is not being done uh, because they want to somehow improve the game. This is being done because the owners and the league, need, they need to insulate themselves from liability. And there were a number of studies out there, and a number of lawsuits were also filed, too, of them, dealing with this kind of stuff. And given that, you know, you need to make these changes. So liability drives policy. But again, on the side of the NHL, it's a bit premature to say that. And, and the NHL has come out and said that, and I do agree with that position. But there is going to be, uh, I think, a point in time where the empirical evidence is going to uh, strongly suggest that fighting causes uh, degenerative brain disease, can accelerate it. I mean, you look at Bugard, who was headed towards middle age, you know, towards advanced levels of dementia in his middle age. That's, that's pretty shocking. And that's why my belief is, uh, and from just, you know, my, with my lawyer Afro on, that fighting will be out of the game, I think, in 10 to 15 years. And it's not because it's right or wrong. Yeah, do I think fighting has a place in the game? Personally, no. To me, it's just this bizarre, silly thing that has no place. But that aside, from a legal standpoint, once the science comes out and once there's a link, the league is going to want to insulate itself from liability. And the way you do that is you get rid of fighting, in my opinion. Eric, in your mind, is there any parity to this, to perhaps what a tobacco company used to say about smoking? What the NHL says about fighting? <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no scientific ties right now, so right. let's not go there. And right. then eventually that had to change. Yeah, I I think in the back of our minds, guys, you know, common sense, although there's nothing common about common sense, so they should rename it uncommon sense. (laughs) But common sense would suggest that 174 fights for Bugard over his career is a problem, and that's going to create uh, brain damage. And there was significant brain damage. I mean, remember that neurologist came out, and she's her reaction was, this is like a, quote, wow result. And and that's a bit uh, disconcerting. Uh, But, you know, from the NHL standpoint, though, guys, it's not a clear case of liability. Let's Let's say that we knew fighting caused it. Well, here's the question for you guys. Bugard didn't only fight in the NHL. He also fought in minor league hockey. And junior, yes. And junior. So we're looking 
when you sue someone for negligence, and that's what the claim would be, that the NHL had a duty of care, and they didn't discharge that duty of care to its players, you know, because they should know that fighting is going gonna, is, is gonna to hurt your brain. The problem is you have to show causation. I have to show that A causes B, or that A is likely to cause B. But where did Bugard sustain all these injuries? You can't say it's exclusively the NHL. Right. So that's the first issue is causation. The second one is this legal principle called voluntary assumption of risk. All that basically means is when, you, when your skate touches the ice, you are basically signing this waiver. You are saying, I consent to incidental contact to the game because that's how hockey is played. And on top of that, I'm a fighter. I understand that I'm going to fight, and I am going to have damage inflicted on me. So I agree to that, and I can't sue you for that. So there are these two issues, you know, of causation and these issues of consent. So it's not like a black and white issue, but you're seeing it now in the NHL taking out headshots. You know, primary contact to the head. Pacioretty on Latang is a great example, I think. That hit last year, I don't think, or two years ago, would have, would have been suspended. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there would have been no suspension for that hit. But now they're taking primary contact to the head out of the game. And that is being done for legal reasons. Again, it has nothing to do with with trying to make the game a better game to watch, in my opinion. Well, okay, let's look at this then. Do, do you think that the teams individually are more at risk um, or vulnerable to, to being sued, or is it the league in general? Like That's a good question. I, it, it's, it, it would be the league, but here's the thing is that when you sue for negligence, so I'm right. saying, look, you owe me a, 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 standard of, a certain standard of care, you didn't discharge it. If I'm suing, I am going to sue the NHL, I, and I'm going to sue the team as well because the team is technically your employer. Mm-hmm. So if you are an employee and if harm is inflicted in the course of your employment and that harm could have been avoided if you were provided with information, for example, if you take a thousand hits to the head, this is going to cause problems, you then sue your employer. But you also try and pull in the organization or the joint venture, the company, on top of that employer because you want to hit everyone that has the money. You know, just as a side note, why are people suing Penn State? And Sandusky. The reason they're suing Penn State in addition to Sandusky is Sandusky is going to run out of money. He probably already run out of money. Yeah. Penn State has got the deep pockets. That's why in law you always hear about deep pockets. So you sue everybody that you possibly can. Uh, let's let's take a look at a couple of other issues here. Graham James uh, pleads guilty to uh, two counts of sexual assault. How much time is he looking at? Like, what would be the next step there? You know, he's, he had the first sentence was three and a half yeah. years, uh, you know, for something like the sexual abuse under the criminal code. My expectation is you're not going to see anything that's going to exceed 10 years. Now, we do know that he's a repeat offender. And when a judge looks at this and a judge decides on sentencing, they have a number of criteria that they actually look at. There's a full list they look at. And on that list, to me, the most important one is previous criminal record. That's, that's key. So we know he's done this before. So... The sentence will be tougher than the first sentence. My guess is somewhere between six and eight years. Uh, personally, I'd like to see something longer mm-hmm. because we know that this guy simply has issues controlling himself. And the other thing that the court will look at is, look, in this kind of case, you are dealing with this uneven balance of power. You have this coach for Swift Current who is in complete control of these young kids. So you are exploiting and taking advantage of that, what's referred to a lot as a fiduciary relationship. It is an uneven relationship, someone with power taking advantage of someone that's vulnerable. Of course, don't like that either. You know, so, when you, Derek, when you talk about that stuff, what do you think of Theron Fleury's comments when he says there's probably around 120 other players that haven't come forward? That's that's interesting because you know when when I'm do some reading on 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 Sandusky you know and and sort of the same situation, a lot of the experts are saying that there are many many more victims. It would not surprise me if many if there were many other victims that were victimized by Graham James simply given his position and his access uh, to children. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. it's it's tough to envision. That he has, and, and the, the thing is that when you look at these lawsuits that are filed, look at the, at the uh, criminal charges that Flurry was involved in. Well, there are two other plaintiffs, but they're unnamed. Look at the Sandusky trial. Civil lawsuit has been filed. A lawsuit for money. The party is not named. Anonymous. Why? Again, because these are cases of the utmost intimacy, utmost personal matters. And the person doesn't want his or her name divulged. And you see this so often in sexual assault cases. Look, we'll sue you criminally and civilly, but I don't want them to know who I am. That, to me, suggests, to begin with, it is so difficult for people 
to have the courage, and understandably so, to come forward and to try and make their voice heard. So I would expect, yes, there are many other victims. Uh, Eric, maybe the most pressing issue of the day. St. Louis Cardinals fans are rattled today. Albert Pujols is leaving to go play for the L.A. Angels. Is there any way they can sue him for a part of that $250 million? <laughs> There's an angel at first base, yes. <laughs> that, is, uh, that, is, that, that is big news. You know what? I, as a baseball fan, I'm happy to see him go to the AL. Uh, you know, they can't sue him, but if they're listening, <laughs> I will take on the case. Because as I told someone when I was doing another show, I said, you know what? Maybe it's not actionable, but it is billable. Well, I will too. I will sign up as your first client and give you a percentage of whatever you get us. How's that sound? You send me a list of who you want to sue for no good reason, and I will work so hard for you to make that happen. What if your name's on the list, Eric? I will go after myself like my ship is going down. <laughs> of course you would. You could bill two people probably in that one. Uh, Eric, thanks for the time, man. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. Take there care. you go. That is Eric Macromella. Team 1260 Legal Analyst, very good insight on some of those issues that we definitely aren't experts on. Uh, 